Welcome to part 2 of the Atomic Audio Visuals in Unity tutorial by Pearplay. In the previous part we created these two prefabs that we can instantiate through a new script. But before we actually instantiate the game objects, let's create a custom editor system so we can easily edit our atomic system for many different effects. Let's have a look at the atomic visualization I've created previously. We can see here two of the same systems in play that are mirrors of each other. It may appear as if all the atoms are attracted to one invisible attractor sphere, but that is not the case. Each system contains eight attractors placed slightly next to each other. Each attractor has a certain amount of atoms that are attracted to their center. So the red atoms are attracted to the far left sphere and the purple atoms are attracted to the far right. This way, they all stay a little next to each other, instead of getting all mixed up. Over in Unity, we will start with an empty scene, and I'm going to remove this skybox, because I really don't like it. So let's go to Lighting, Settings, and go to Skybox Material, and I'll select None for now. And on the camera, we will change this to Solid Color, and I'd like to pick a color that is a little bit above the black. So let's start off with a new game object and we'll call this empty game object uh, atomic attraction and from this uh, object out of we are going to instantiate everything. So let's add a component and we'll type here um, atomic attraction and let's open up this script. So we already created our two prefabs, the atom and the attractor so let's make a reference towards these two objects. So let's make a public game object and call this Adam and the attractor. Now we also need to use some colors and we could use a public color for that but then we have to make an array of colors and we have to specify all the colors separately and a better way to do this is make a public gradient. So let's make a public gradient and we'll call this just gradient and now we've got a public gradient with all the colors we can choose. But we also need to know how many of these attractors we want to instantiate. So for that we are going to make a public integer. And this is going to be an array of ints. So in the integers we can uh, say on which of the bands on the audio spectrum it is going to apply to. Because we have got the audio peer class in which we have a a spectrum of 0 to 7, uh, which is 0 the lowest base values and the highest uh, frequencies, and we can specify that into the public integer array. Now we want to place all of these attracting points next to each other, so we need some kind of a spacing in between. So let's create a uh, public float, and we'll call this the spacing between the attract points. Now we only have a spacing, but we also want to have a direction into which we want to apply the spacing. So we can create a public vector 3, which is going to be a direction. And we'll call this spacing direction. And now that we've got the direction and we've got the spacing uh, between, we also need to know the scale of all these attract points. So let's create a public float, which is going to be the scale attract points and let's also create a range because it's a little bit more nice in the inspector so let's create this range between 0 and 20 and let's also make the range the same for that one and now that we've set up all of the variables that we need for now we're going to draw this into the editor so we can see what we're doing and to do that we can use a new private void and this is called on draw gizmos and inside the on draw gizmos we are going to create a uh, for loop to apply all of the different attracting points and specify all the variables that we want so let's create a for loop and we'll say for integer i is zero if i is less than the length of the attract points that we want so the 
attract points dot is length. Now we want to apply all of the colors in the gradient to the attract points that we have and based on how many of the attract points we have we need to know which step we have to take inside the gradient and a gradient goes from 0 to 1 so we have to make some of kind of an evaluation so let's make a float and we'll call this evaluate step and it is going to be 1.0 which is the um, total length of the gradient divided by the attract point length so if the length is for example 8 then 1 divided by 8 is 0 0.1.25 so every time it knows that it has to increase by that amount now we're going to actually set the color to a gizmo sphere so we're going to create now a, a temporary color so let's say color and we'll call this just color without capital and we're going to speak to the gradient and we're going to evaluate on the gradient and we'll get the evaluate step and we're going to do this times the position in the loop and now we'll say inside the for loop on the gizmos we're going to apply a color and we'll say that the color is the color and now everything we do behind this where we're going to actually draw the sphere it's going to take the color that we set here and every time it's going through the loop it will it will take a new color for that so to show a sphere inside the editor we can do something as gizmos dot draw sphere and it requires two different uh, variables uh, first it needs a position uh, which is the center and it also needs a radius which is the scale and we still need to create the position for it so let's comment this out for now and create here a new vector 3 which is a new vector 3 and the position will be the position of where this object uh, runs on which is the transform dot its position dot x plus uh, we set the spacing in between of the attract points spacing between attract points times the position in the loop which is i times the spacing direction that we can specify and need to have the spacing direction dot x of course and let's just copy paste this and we have to just change this to y and also to y and let's change this position to the z value now that we've got our position we can uh, uncomment this and draw the sphere at the position pos and it's going to be with the scale attract points now that should be working for now so let's save the script and go back to unity now here you can see all the variables we can leave these empty but we can also specify the prefabs so let's just drag and drop our atom inside there and the attractor in the next part i will uh, use actually the atom and the attractor and we're going to instantiate things Right now you see it's still empty because we specified the length here of uh, 0. So let's make this a length of 8. Now we've got all these values here. And the scale is still 0. So if we crank this up, you can see something happening. So let's set this to 10. And we can do the spacing in between. So if we make this higher, and nothing happens because the spacing direction is still set at 0. If we want to place some different spheres to the right, then we can set the direction of x a bit more. And you can see all these spheres. And we can specify some gradient. So let's click on this gradient. And you get this pop-up window. And we can specify some different color here. So let's cr uh, create here something. And you can see that it's applying directly into the different spheres. Now the cool thing is that you can also say here new and then it will save this preset of the gradient and you can keep using that inside other projects as well. So I've got a gradient here which is a nice rainbow and it's applied to that. Now we can change these numbers but they won't do anything for now. But we can change the direction. In the next tutorial I will uh, actually instantiate the atoms onto the different spheres and it will 
apply all of the different uh, colors to the atoms. So these are just for reference so you can build your own. So you can say here I just want to use one or I want to use three or use 20. So it's really easy to use that and we can just duplicate this one and place it somewhere else in the scene so you can really see where you're working and how it's going to be in the result. So that's all for this part. Thank you for watching and if you learned something give this video a thumbs up or if you'd like to be updated on more tutorials subscribe to the channel. If you would like to get the complete source code or support me making these tutorials become a patron on Patreon for just 5 bucks. See you next time.